What truly is going on? That's all I want to know. You can call me a racist. You can call me a misogynist. I don't care what you call me. Just protect my borders. Do your best to have a law enforcement presence to protect our country. China's making a move. Russia's already made a move. If you guys are all in on this together, if this is all just one big world leader, global superpower, cash grab, which is what it looks like, will you just let us know? Let us know what's going on. Because what is happening is there is so much illogical, irrepresentable ridiculousness taking hold of Washington. And I don't just mean Washington State, I mean Washington, D.C. But even Washington State. What are we doing? Our cities are in ruin. It's zombie land. Do you literally think that the, the only way for Biden to get elected again is to either prosecute Trump or import millions of new voters and you're still going to stand on the leg of you're not allowed to mention that the election was stolen? Come on. If this ends up being just over a pride and ego and an inability to say sorry or accept responsibility, that's the easiest thing to do in the freaking world. Why do so many people have zero capabilities of just accepting responsibility? Yeah, it's not fun. It sucks. It sucks to eat crow. It sucks to be wrong. But you know what? As soon as you figure out that like being wrong is not horrible, <laughs> being wrong and accepting that actually makes you a decent individual, which increases your ability to communicate and connect and accomplish that skill alone. That's it. Just accepting responsibility, being sorry, being able to stop and look and go, yeah, maybe I, maybe I overreacted. You know, I kind of let my emotions get me and really I'm just jealous. But my jealousy is coming out as anger and bitterness and I say things I don't mean. It's just, it's super fucking easy. If we end up literally, if this ends up being what it looks like, it's, it is which is basically the same fallout I had with my lifelong friends and you know my lifelong relationships that I've had with registered democrats where all of them are just non-existent nobody can, like no relationship zero like, think that I am a despicable, like, horrible person, I think. And I don't even like Trump. I, I think I'm not a Republican. I just have conservative values. I was in finance. I was, I was raised by a right-wing Christian. Like, my grandfather gave $2 million to Jerry Falwell. When he died, didn't give any money to like his grandkids. Well, some grandkids, if you went to church a certain amount and you served God a certain amount, you got something from the estate. If you didn't, like I did, you know, my grandfather made me pee my pants in church. He used to get so mad at me. You know what he got mad at me for in church? Last time I peed my pants at like, I don't know five years old, he got mad because I was crying, quietly crying on the pew 
because I had to stay with him and my grandma for like a week. Said something to me so, I don't remember exactly what it was, but I remember the feeling of feeling the warm urine rush over my legs. I grew up with a right wing Christian kind of, what you guys all hate on CNN is what you basically say you hate about Republicans. My grandfather never talked about politics. He never told us who to vote for or how to be or like, like all we had to do was follow Jesus. I didn't. So I wasn't in the estate. I didn't get any help. My other grandparents were registered Democrats, I think. They never talked to me about politics either. They just loved me and talked to me and we're just wonderful people. I learned and experienced and, and like formed who I was out of my respect for how kind they were and succeeded in life, not because I'd set any goals, but because I didn't want to disappoint my grandfather. You know, I wanted to be a good person to be like my grandfather. I wanted to teach people how to do as many things as my grandmother taught me how to do, like make dollhouse furniture and how to sew and how to cook and how to weave on a loom. I mean, it just, and my grandfather teaching me how to drive tractors and fix things and run irrigation pipes and grow fruit. He was an apple farmer and an orthodontist. The things I learned from those two people are absolutely the only reason I have any confidence to this day. Otherwise, I was raised around such shaming, toxic, horrible people for most of my life. Especially found out nowadays, but it's just too bad. What are we doing? It's just like, it was so enriching knowing these people. Registered Democrats voted for Kennedy. I remember, you know, seeing the TV on in both the houses. So who did I vote for when I turned 18? Ross Perot. I thought he was a great candidate. I thought he, when I heard him speak, I was like, that guy knows what he's doing. I'd like him to run the country. That was it. You know, then I voted. I think I voted for Clinton once. I voted for Bush once. I missed one election. Other than that, I haven't been that political. I've been nice my whole life. I've treated women with respect. I have elderly people across the street. Um, you know, I, I've, I've tried to do the right thing. Because my grandfather instilled in me that that's what you do. And if you do the right thing, good things come back to you. And, you know, I believe everything happens for a reason. But, so like, I guess that makes me a conservative. If that makes me a conservative, um, is that bad? I'm not racist. I'm not a misogynist. I treat women with respect. My child's godmother is a black lady who grew up in Harlem. One of my best elderly friends here in town is this sweet black Native American woman that I talk to all the time on Facebook. I, I, what are you people doing? I know no racists. The last racist comment I remember hearing was like in 1984. And it was from some, like, total backwoods. I, 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 well, actually, you know what? I take that back. No. I ran into two white power, white supremacist, crazy sons of bitches in, like, 2008 or 9. Backwoods, Alaska. Kenai River. They had hats that said things that I, I can't repeat. They were both German. Spoke German. It's kind of freaky. Met him at a fire right before we went fishing on the Kenai River. That is my experience with racism. 
Nobody in my hometown looked at race. There were interracial couples. It wasn't thought of as weird. And then suddenly, something happens, and now every white man's racist. And if you're a confident white man, you're suddenly like no longer allowed to use the parks and the, like, I shit you not. We're putting out this message to people that is nothing but trash. And you guys know it. I mean, come on. Everything, the lying that's happening, the gamesmanship, the bullshit, the, you think everybody is so dumb. That's, I think, what's, like, making more people mad, I think, is, is the, the, like, holy shit, do they think we're this dumb? Do they really think we're this dumb? I, if they don't, I get, the only other thing I could think of is they just want to, they want a war. They want a civil war. They're trying to instigate a battle. They're trying to instigate a fight, which, by the way, any more conservative-leaning individuals, or even if you're flip-flopping registered Democrats, we cannot have violence. That is what they want. They want people to get super angry. They want them to get super angry, bring out some guns, do something stupid just like they wanted it January 6th because they teed it up. They teed it up. They, the National Guard was ordered. So there's a lot of games being played right now. And if you are moving too quick or if you have too much money and you're just having a bunch of fun and you don't care and you're just parroting what your group is saying, you might want to think about paying attention. Don't think of it as there's a bunch of Republicans. We can't let the Republicans win. It's a Republicans. They're making, they're shaming you for even considering voting for a sane person. And who knows? Maybe Trump is going to be prosecuted. Maybe he is going to go to jail. I mean, it is turning out that Biden and him committed the exact same crime. But Biden can't be prosecuted because he's too old and frail, but he can run the country. So who knows? Neither of them should technically be running. I'd rather see both of them taken off the presidential ballot. And we, the people, need to figure out what the hell's going on. I am considering a congressional run at some point. It's might have to be a couple years away at least. But we the people have to take this country back. There's enough information out there online right now through independent media sources that I guarantee you can put the pieces together too. You, If you watch enough and know the right places to look, you can see what actually is going on. Nobody can actually say it which is really scary. Nobody can say it, but it's out there. There's five or six different sources that you can go. A couple of people, I think, have nailed it right on the button. Surprised you can still see that stuff. But we got issues. We got issues. I'm going to keep talking about it. I'm going to keep shedding light as long as they let me. I, I'm almost afraid to speak out. This is the first time in my life I've been afraid to speak out. I think that's how they want us to feel. But that's all we have. Do not use violence. Use words. I'll do my part. We'll stay at it. Stay confident. Stay strong. Stay cool. Stay confident, stay strong, we'll talk it out, keep the faith.